Well, Zach, welcome. Thank you. We are uh, so so excited to have you here with us today. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Zach is an old time client of ours. I mean, one of the OGs, the originals uh, from from two years ago, and uh, you know, it's it's been a blessing to have someone with us for so long. It was like before I knew it, I was like, God, have you been with us for like eighteen months? And then I was like, God, have you been with us for like twenty months? And I didn't even before I knew it, we were best friends. <laughs> I think we were one of your first customers, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, it's, it's been amazing. And, uh, you know, that's been a good proof of concept to me, uh, you know, to be transparent, you know, with you. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you know, we all um, have thought sometimes we all need our own proof of concepts out there. Uh, you know, so, you know, so customers like Zach and a handful of others that have been with me for almost two years has, uh, has really helped me. Um, feel my own proof of concept. Um, but uh, thank you so much for coming with us, uh, joining us today. Um, I wanted to, you know, first, you know, I'd love for you to, you know, introduce yourself. Uh, you know, how many deals did you close last year? Um, you know, kind of give the viewers a feel for, um, for Zach Cramp. Well, uh, I, my name is Zach Cram. I, I um, own and run Springfield Property Solutions. We're a, a small local real estate investment company in, in the Springfield and Branson, Missouri markets. Um, we have been doing this full time for a couple of years now. And honestly, um, the ability to go full time had a lot to do with our choice of, uh, of using lead mining for cold calling. I was doing that myself previously, but I just couldn't scale. Um, I was spending all my time on the phone and not out looking at houses like I should should have been. Um, so once we turned over everything to uh, to Nick's company, that's really when things took off for us and we were able to go full time, uh, both myself and my wife. Uh, since then, we did um, 54 deals last year and we recently opened up a, a second market. So now we're we're in Atlanta as well. Wow, that is uh, that's awesome! Fifty four deals last year. Yeah, we were busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if I'm not mistaken, you know your market is uh, is unique. <laughs> it is pretty unique. So where we're at, we're in Southwest Missouri, um, and we work mostly the Springfield market. We do a little bit in Branson as well. Uh, Springfield is um, it's it's a small town. And um, there's a lot of rural area around it, but uh, Springfield itself is is not a very big pay, uh, place, and housing is very cheap here. So we have to do um, we have to do a lot of volume to to keep the numbers up, you know, to to do the same same volume or do the same revenue as other guys in bigger cities. It takes us twice the deals or three times as many deals to do the same revenue. Um, so we have to we really have to stay on top of our marketing to keep the deal flow going. Yeah, that is, uh, that's awesome. You know, I've, I've loved to see, you know, what you've done. I think uh, at one point, Zach had told me that he had stacked all the lists of everybody in the city, <laughs> almost. And I think there was like 15 people that weren't on, already reached out to. Yeah, that was, uh, that's when we decided to go to Atlanta. So we were <laughs> buying, we were buying lists from everywhere, lead mining, um, as well as list source. And one of the things that we were doing was, you know, we were taking our list from everywhere and putting them in our database. But uh, one time I tried to buy a list and it was like 5,000. And then uh, when I when I stacked the list and compared it against who we already had, uh, there was only, I think there was 26 names in the entire Southwest Missouri uh, that we didn't already have on the list. So we went from 5,000 to 26. So we, uh, we, we really saturated this market. I love it, you know, and, and that's what marketing is, right? You know, I mean, marketing is telling everybody what you do. Well, and there's no way, there's no way that we would have been able to cold call that many people ourselves without, without outsourcing the cold calling. I mean, that's, that's what really allowed us to scale our business um, over the last couple of years is getting me off the phone and back face to face with sellers. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And we, I got a couple of questions for you. Um, okay. 
you know, I wanted to dive in, you know, we covered, you know, how long have you been with lean mining? I mean, is it 22 months and 20 months now? Uh, I don't know. It was 2018. It's been a couple of years. I know yeah. that. Yeah. You know, I count it by the month because it's still my baby. Right. So, <laughs> uh, but no, you know, it's uh, so, you know, 20, 20 ish months. We're about to hit our two year mark here in about a month and a half or so. So we're excited about that. And what, what services do you currently use of ours? So we use, uh, we use all the services. So we use the list pulling and the skip tracing. And then uh, we give those lists right back to you guys to, uh, to cold call. Um, you guys manage all of our Facebook ads. And then, of course, we're using the um, uh, text messages as uh, part of our follow-up campaigns. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I actually didn't even realize that you used all five of our services. Um, that's, uh, that's amazing. You know, um, and that's exactly, you know, was my vision whenever I created lead mining before this. I was an executive at a, uh, at a real estate education company and, uh, you know, working with them and you, they charged a lot of money, uh, upwards of 30 to $45,000 for their top tier trainings. And, and I remember a lot of the students having to, you know, work really hard and sometimes still not see success. And it kind of broke my heart as the executive, <laughs> you know, who was running this part of the program, one of the things I handled was uh, the retention, which is people complaining. And it really broke my heart, you know, time after time when people were, you know, in the trenches financially and physically, you know, and, uh, and then they still wouldn't get a result. And I was like, you know, I want to create something. When I left that career uh, and I was like, I want to create something that services these people. Um, so, you know, and thank, thank you for sharing that because it really helps, you know, get me a sense of fulfillment. Um, and so, you know, how many deals did you close last year? That was 54. If, yeah, 54. All right. And how, yep. how, how are we looking this year so far? Uh, we are, we, we were on track to beat 54. So our goal was 100 for this year. We were a little bit behind before all the uh, coronavirus craziness, so we were we were actually on track to do around seventy five. Uh, over the last few weeks, things have changed a lot. It's it's um, some of our stuff has slowed down, and uh, some of our other stuff has actually gotten really busy. So I don't know what's going to happen this year. We're just we're we're definitely not slowing down. Me and you have had this talk a lot. We're actually yeah. pumping more money into advertising right now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and and, and things like uh, the tracks are going to split, right? And uh, you know, it's important to be in control, <laughs> no matter which which way it goes. Um, and that's it's good to hear. You know, you'll you'll definitely we will all definitely adapt uh, to to the changes that are coming. And you know, and honestly, I I think as long as we apply what we know, it will be just as fruitful as what we've just experienced. Um, I think. I think that um, things are going to, things are going to work out. There's opportunities, but the, the, the opportunities are going to be a little bit different from what they were previously. And I think that the, um, uh, our methods, our marketing methods are going to be, uh, they may be affected, but there's always sellers that need to sell. And there's always buyers that need to buy regardless of what the, uh, what's going on in the market. Prices may may change up or down uh, over time, but at the end of the day, people got to sell, people got to buy, and you know as long as we're putting our name out there and contacting sellers every day, I, I expect things to stay pretty consistent for us. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And, and you know, and there, there's a lot of action going on. You know, owning a lead generation company, I can kind of see almost like the real estate stock market. And, you know, when it first hit, a lot of people backed out, but a lot of the big players put way more in, you know, I mean, we've been skip tracing files of like 20 to 30,000 records. We've been cold calling huge campaigns for some of the big dogs. You can see that, you know, the big people are moving, um, you know, now's a great time for lead gen. You know, the whole nation is technically in a form of distress, which as a real estate investor, that's the one of the first things you look for is for in a qualifying lead. Well, and we've noticed that our, um, our lead count's gone up because people are at home. They have time to deal with it. 
especially with our uh, our Facebook ads. I mean, people are on social media and they're thinking about what are we going to do with this extra property that I have, or you know, this this um, uh, tenant that I, I've had trouble with over the years. Now I'd like to turn that property into some cash, or you know, I've got this this property that I inherited and I need to get some I, I need to get some cash while it still has equity before the market drops. So, you know, our, our business hasn't been um, affected negatively, especially on the lead count side. And I expect that to stay strong. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I've been telling a lot of clients right now, they go, you know, is now a good time during this? If you guys are watching this during this outbreak, you know, is now a good time? And I think worst case scenario, you're going to be talking to people about buying their house that you normally would never have that conversation with right now. Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario, you got your foot in the door on a lead. Maybe it's six months from now, but you know what? Your foot's in the door on a conversation you would have never previously had. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think, you know, strike while the iron's hot, man. Um, you know, and, uh, and I definitely know you are. Um, all right. So, you know, tell us, you know, what are some of the benefits that, you know, lead mining has brought to you? So what I really like about lead mining is the fact that it's, it's active marketing. Um, I'm not a fan of mailers. I know that there are tons of investors across the country that have done well with, uh, you know, passive marketing, uh, mailers and billboards and that type of stuff. They've done it for years and it works for them. Uh, for me, I'm impatient and I like to go out and, and find the sellers and talk to them and, um, see if they want to sell. I, I don't, I don't like sitting back and waiting on the phone to ring. So we, um, we use the active marketing techniques such as cold calling. Uh, and even Facebook ads, you know, I, I don't, I don't look at Facebook ads as an as a passive source of marketing, because uh, Facebook ads we can choose who we target, and then we also use retargeting. So I know you guys use the Facebook pixels on our website to retarget the same people over and over, uh, and then we're specifically targeting uh, uh, demographics that we expect to be uh, willing to sell their property. So you know, for me, the the key to using uh, the, the key to finding leads is is that active marketing as opposed to uh, the passive marketing. And that's why we use lead mining. Um, you know, I used to do all that stuff myself. I think me and you talked in 2018 before I started and I told you, you know, hey, I'm just cold calling everybody myself right now, uh, but we've got to scale. At that time, I think what you may not have realized is that we didn't have any money. And uh, when I committed to your service, I didn't really know how I was going to pay for it. Uh, I used the money from one deal that we made um, to, to start with you, but you know, if, if lead mining had not been producing, we wouldn't have been able to keep going with you very long. But I knew that, that, that going out and finding those sellers and actively tracking them down, talking to them and asking, Hey, do you want to sell is what we needed to do to keep the leads coming in consistently. And, uh, two years later, we're still rolling. I love it. You know, well, what, you know, what are, what are, some of your, what would you attribute to your success as an investor? Um, more than anything, that that active marketing. So, um, I I think you know going out and finding finding the sellers, uh, whether that's from list pulling, skip tracing, um, you know, cold calling, uh, being very targeted with our Facebook ads, and then being consistent. Uh, you know, we. Um, we just don't stop. Uh, we, we, we started uh, slow like everybody, but the results really snowball over time uh, because you start to build up that database. You know, we, we make contact with somebody and, you know, it's great if they say, yeah, I want to sell my house right now. Can you meet me there in an hour? But the reality is that a lot of times that doesn't happen. So I think that a lot of people stop short. Uh, they don't get the results they want right off the bat and then they, they, they quit. So for us, you know, we make contact with them through lead mining. You guys call them, uh, and then uh, they may not be ready to sell today. But when when they circle back through the list, or they see our other types of marketing, or they see our Facebook ads over a period of time, our name is, is already in their mind. So they're already thinking about our company name. We've already planted the seed of hey, let's let's um, talk about selling. And then when they get ready to sell, that might be six months down the road or a year down the road. Uh, then they're ready to talk to us. And I think that consistency over time and just sticking with it until, you know, we built our database up so that we're, we're getting in contact. We're actively contacting everybody that is the type of 
seller that we want to find, that person that's motivated, that's got equity, they have the right type of property, they're in the right area. Uh, we've just built those databases over time and we just keep contacting them over and over and over until when they get ready to sell, they're ready to sell. Yeah, you know, making a flow or a system of, you know, what it looks like. You know, one thing Zach is amazing of at is creating that system of, you know, staying in their world. You know, did they get one of our follow-up texts? Or did they get in the voicemail, the, the ringless voice drop? You know, not everything has to be a blast. And one thing Zach does in his follow-up systems is he, they, he actually uses the follow-up systems not only to assess cold leads, but to warm up warm leads as well. Will you talk about that for a second, Zach? Our, um, our follow-up system never stops until they tell us, uh, to stop calling them. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we start, um, with ringless voicemails and, uh, cold calling. So you guys do all the cold calling. Um, everybody that's on our list also gets targeted, uh, specifically in the Facebook ads. So we're hitting them with ringless voicemails. We're hitting them with cold calls. Uh, if they're on Facebook, they're, they're seeing our Facebook ads. If they go to our website, um, we use the Facebook pixel so that we can retarget them over and over. Uh, and then once we make contact with them, uh, our system uh, will automatically put them on an email drip campaign that lasts for, for 12 months and it sets tasks for us to contact them. So for example, let's say we, we um, uh, give you a list, you, we buy a list from you, we skip trace it, we give it to you, you guys call it. We make contact with that, uh, uh, with, with that seller because they say, well, yeah, I might be interested in selling or I'd like to see what you'd offer. Uh, and we talk to them, but they're not ready to sell right now. We have a follow-up system uh, where we contact them through text messages, ringless voicemails, and emails uh, over the next year, and then we can extend it out over time. We also ha uh, set tasks for myself or um, our office manager or my wife to physically make contact with them ourselves um, every couple months. So they're getting all the automated stuff, but after they get the automated stuff for so long, we just call them and say, hey, are you ready to sell yet? Um, that way they can see you know, hey, there's a, there is a live person here. Now, what that does is by using lead mining, we're able to weed through all those so that we're not doing that follow-up system with people who aren't interested. So you guys are making the initial contact. The lead comes back to us. And now we know, okay, maybe they're not ready to sell now, but at least they're they're willing to discuss the, the concept. So maybe it'll be a year, two years, uh, six months, whatever, but they're in our system and we're, and we're staying in touch with them over and over. Um, and that's, that's one of the big advantages for us with lead mining is, you know, I don't have to put, if I send you a list of 5,000, I don't have to put 5,000 people on a call flow where we have to constantly contact them. I can give you the 5,000, you call the 5,000 and say, Hey, out of those 5,000, here's 50 people that may or may not sell today, but they're, they're interested in talking. Well, now we're just focusing on the 50 that we know are interested. And that's, that's where, uh, we can really be targeted and focus our efforts on what, uh, what we need to, so we can be efficient. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and I hope everyone watching, you know, really got a lot from that. And that is that, you know, follow up is so important. Systems are so important. You know, Zach uses us almost as a sifting pan, if yep. you will. You know, he only wants the gold to mess with. He doesn't want to sift through the dirt. That's the sifting pan job, you know. So, so when, when we first started with you guys, it was just me. Um, I did everything. I drove around. I skip traced myself because I couldn't afford skip tracing. Um, I tracked people down. I made all the phone calls. I did all that. And I realized that I was spending very little time doing what I needed to do, which was uh, evaluating deals and making offers. So it was. it became clear to me real quick that I need to outsource all the other stuff, all the contacting people, all the tracking people down, all the finding lists. And then the only thing I want to do is I want to be face-to-face -face with sellers I want to be evaluating deals and I want to be making offers. If I'm doing anything other than those three things, I'm not making money. So we gave all that stuff to lead mining. And since then, uh, you know, we pass it off to you. And then what comes back to us is what I'm working on. Yeah. Well, you know, hats off to you because, you know, I always tell people that what we do at lead mining is we take your current job of lead generation off of your plate and you now become a lead manager. And that job is just as hard. So, you know, definitely, you know, you got to give yourself some uh, some solid praise there because, you know, you were able to do something with those leads. 
Uh, it may be just as hard, but it's definitely a lot more profitable. <laughs> yeah. And, but right. Yeah. But time, time to profit ratio. Right. You know, exactly. and uh, you know, I started this because when I had left that education company, I went home and cold called for literally four months straight. And, uh, and I was so good at cold calling, you know, I had a partner who was supposed to be great at closing the deal. Um, lucky for me, lead mining was founded in between that time somewhere. Um, so, you know, uh, the deal closings, um, never really, you know, mattered too much because I was like, I, I, I was accidentally on to lead mining at the time and it was amazing. Um, and you know, that's, that, that's another important lesson you know, I share with people. Like sometimes you have to be focused, even with the, even if it's a deal disposition, don't be too overcommitted to whatever you think it looks like. You know, I was looking for my first real estate deal and I founded one of America's favorite lead generation companies. And if I would have been too focused on that first deal, or if I would have been too focused on wholesaling versus using a realtor or whatever that may be, I would have potentially, you know, not, not be here today. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things that, um, that I talk about a lot with, I speak pretty regularly at our local RIA and I work with a lot of the newer investors. And that's one of the things that we talk about a lot is, um, exit strategies. You know, if, if your only, uh, if your only goal is lock up a property at, you know, 70% or 65% of the ARV and, and, or, and then wholesale it to somebody, find a cash buyer. I mean, you know, in some markets that works, but the reality is there's a lot of ways to make money in, in real estate. And um, if you're focused, if you're so laser focused on one thing that you can't see the other opportunities, then either you're going to have a hard time making money or you're leaving money on the table because our goal is, you know, to wholesale everything. The reality is it doesn't always work like that. And that's how we've been able to build our, our portfolio is because some stuff we just didn't wholesale because the deal didn't work for a wholesale, but it did work for us to, to buy it, hold it, and either owner finance or, or um, hold it as a rental. And, and we built our, our rental portfolio kind of by accident, looking for wholesale deals. And our flips pretty much come by accident also. You know, we try to wholesale them, but if the deal doesn't work for a wholesale, we take it down and flip it ourselves. Absolutely. You know, you just have to, you just have to take it down yourself, you know, and, uh, and, you know, what, what a great point, how it accidentally becomes, you know, your strategy. Um, I love it. Yeah, let me, let me take a look here. You know, what is one piece of advice you would give your younger self now that you are successful? Um, it, start early, start as early as possible and be consistent because, you know, the, the results start really slow. Um, our first year, uh, with this business, we did one deal. Uh, then we did seven deals. Then we did 22 deals. Then we did 54 deals and, uh, we're on track Well, we were on track to do 75. I'm not sure what's going to happen the rest of this year, but had things, had the economy not changed, we definitely would have hit our 75. Um, so, you know, the things really snowball. And I, I think that most people who struggle in this business um, or who tried and didn't have success, it's because they quit too early. I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, we spent the entire first year and only did one deal. And then the yeah, following yeah. year, we did seven. We did seven times what we did the first year. Uh, and then we did 22. We, we did three times that the following year. Um, but it's because, you know, the results really start to snowball. So, if you start as early as possible and just stick with it and don't stop, then um, before you know it, you'll have, you'll have more than you want. <laughs> you know, amen. A amen to that. You know, I mean, there's a lot to be said for persistence and, you know, taking action. I mean, you, if you can put those two things together, really, no matter what you do, you'll be the best in the world at it at some point in your life. You know, if you just don't quit, you can't fail. I got another good one for you. Um, before real estate, what are some ways that, that you made money? Um, all of them. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I was in the restaurant business on and off uh, multiple times. Uh, my dad owned tire shops um, 
in multiple states. So I worked for him as when I was growing up. And then again, later in my early twenties, um, worked at a retread shop. I did uh, direct sales for a while. Uh, I worked as a medical scribe. I worked as a, uh, as an EMT on an ambulance for a while. I was actually, was in the military, still am in the military as a, as a medic. Um, I worked um, for a local hospital on their clinical trials for a while. Um, so yeah, I did, I did roofing when I was in college, uh, kind of during the summers to make some extra money. I did some roofing. So done a little bit of, a little bit of everything. Uh, I, I, I love it. You know, I think a lot of people will be able to, you know, relate to that, you know, no, no, no doubt. Um, so what, what, what's, what's motivated you to become successful? Really, um, more than anything, the ability to have freedom to, to do what I want and spend time with the family and um, make make enough money to have the freedoms that I want. Because, you know, I, 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 hate to, I hate to sound, you know, money motivated, but the reality is that you got to make enough money to be able to afford to do what you want to do. And um, and that's that's really what it came down to. You know, when I was working, working for other people. Um, I had a good, I I've had some really good jobs and, and I, I do appreciate my previous employers a lot. Um, but I like being in charge of my own income because it gives me the freedom to, uh, to, to do as I please. If I want to travel, I can travel. If I want to stay home and hang out with the family for the day, I, I have the ability to do that. And real estate really provides that for me. It also, um, has provided me the opportunity to open some other businesses. You know, we've, We've, we've gotten into a lot of different things um, since we started in real estate and the ability to do that really has, has to do with the income that we've generated from real estate. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, the people I've met through real estate investing have definitely been, you know, some of the favorite people I think I've met, period. You know, that being said, they are all over the spectrum. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but man, I've met a lot of amazing people, um, you know, through the realm of real estate, whether we've created a business or they've even inspired a part of my business, you know, if you will. You know, not everything's a partnership. Sometimes things are just an idea, you know. But well, I think one thing that I've noticed with with all successful real estate investors and not just real estate, but most business owners is the one thing that makes them different is that they are consistent and they take action. I mean, if you just, if you take the action, you stay consistent and you just don't quit, it's hard to fail. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It is hard to fail, especially if you're learning. You know, I remember I was at the smoothie shop the other day and I was, and this was, you know, when everything was great. And, uh, and this girl was like, she made like, oh, I wish it was 2019. I wish last year was here. And I said, you know, I said, you know, life, don't worry, life, life gets better. She goes, does it? Are you sure? And I said, yeah. She goes, well, it doesn't seem that way for some people. And I said, yeah, let me rephrase that. Life gets better if you learn, you know, and you know, my, my life's never been better. You know, and that's kind of how it should progress. You know, it does it does take 20, 30 years sometimes to figure it out, you know, to figure out how to, you know, stop yourself from making a mistake or, you know, hurting again, or even if that's a closed deal or a partnership in the future or something we learned from somebody along the way that we then took with us. And I mean, other people's ideas have made me a lot of money, you know. Yeah. You know, we, um, we don't do anything new in our business. You know, we copy what, what works for other people. And we're, we're members of the local real estate investor association. I'm, I'm, uh, in the, the, uh, mastermind group with you. I'm in some other networking groups because, you know, we just, we, we like to see what works for other people and then we yeah. just copy it. And, and then we, you know, I do the same for, for other people. I tell them, Hey, this is what we do. It works for us. <laughs> exactly. We're happy to show you. Yeah, no, exactly. Right. right. One of the reasons, yeah, exactly. Which is one of the reasons why, you know, we're creating this video, you know, I mean, uh, the, the transparency and that's such a good point, right? I totally forgot about that. The give back as well as the want to, you know, receive um, that, you know, that, that, that we execute. Uh, because one thing I love about this business is I get to have all these people to talk to and influence and tell them how to cold call and what type of list to pull and, 
you know, my favorite thing is talking to customers and, you know, doing uh, and, and, and influencing them in a positive way and in their business. Uh, it's definitely a blast. Um, all right. So I got I, I got one last question for you. Uh, what would you say to someone who's considering enrolling in one of our lead generation systems at Lead Mining? Should have done it a long time ago. Um, yeah, you, you you already missed out on on all the time that you haven't done it. We when I say that the services that Lead Mining provided us allowed us to scale our business and get where we where we are. That's exactly what I mean. Um, you know, I was doing everything myself, and the reality is there's only so much time in the day, and I can only do so many deals if I'm pulling lists and skip tracing and tracking people down and calling people and texting people and trying to run Facebook ads because I I did all that stuff myself. I've done more also other marketing stuff myself. But once I took those, um, those responsibilities off my plate and gave it to the experts, now I can focus on what I'm the expert on. I'm an expert on finding money for deals. I'm an expert on structuring deals. I'm an expert on negotiating real estate. I'm an expert on disposing of real estate. I'm good at that stuff. I'm not a marketing guy. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking about using, using lead mining, you should have done it a long time ago, but it's not too late. Get in there, get signed up, get your services going and focus on what makes your real estate business money. And that's not you sitting on the phone calling people. That's finding somebody else outsourcing it. That's not you managing a Facebook uh, campaign. Let the experts do that stuff. So you can focus on meeting face to face with sellers and making off. If you're not doing that, your business isn't making money. Man, thank you so much, Zach. You know, I really, uh, I, I really appreciate that. And you know, it's been amazing to have you with us for so long. Um, you know, it's so it, 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 it. I love it. Sometimes you log in and it will tell me, you know, our total financial relationship over the last couple of years. And you know, and it's just, you know, and and I and I forget, you know, not only do we have a friendship, but you know, but you are like you've been with us for so long and you've invested so much in us, you know, and to be honest with you, you know, we've gotten far because of your consistent, you know, investment as well. Um, you know, so we appreciate that. I really appreciate it. I mean, you know, we, we needed to grow our business and it was at the point of either outsource this stuff or hire somebody in house. And I don't want to hire somebody in house. I mean, we have employees, but, but this is not our business. It's not our specialty. And trying to hire somebody and train them to do something that I'm not even good at just doesn't make sense. You know, that's why we just outsource it. Find find the expert, let them handle it. And then I'll deal with the leads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a great point. You know, I, like I do, I, I, I do strive for us to be, you know, your lead generation department, you know. And the cool thing is when something goes wrong, you just call me. You don't have to deal with some guy you haven't even paid a commission to because even you haven't closed a deal off of his leads. You know, you get to call me and then I get to fix it. Well, and, and I guess there's two other points that we didn't talk about. One is, is liability protection for us. So with with um, all of the the lawsuit issues that go on with, um, you know, uh, TCPA stuff, I don't want to have to deal with it. I don't want to have to, you know, scrub the do not call list. I don't want to have to look at the known litigators list. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, we just give it to you guys. You're the experts. Let you deal with it. I, I got other things to do. I need to go look at houses. I need to make offers. And the other part of it is, you know, we like to travel and it, it makes it really simple. If, um, you know, we just got back from Europe. We, we spent two weeks in Europe. While I was in Europe, every day I got leads from lead mining. So I didn't have to go to an office every day and make sure that my cold callers are on the phone, make sure that they're following up, make sure they're doing the thing. I just get leads in my email every day. They come in. Wherever I'm at in the world, I can pick up the phone, call that seller and set an appointment to go look at it or have them send me pictures or do a virtual walkthrough. I don't have to be there. And that that's huge for us, not having to manage a team. I just get the leads and then I can focus on on working them later anywhere in the world. Yeah, that's awesome. Because uh, and I'm glad to hear that because that's that's a very similar life I've created for myself. Uh, you know, at Lead Mining, everyone works from home. All the Americans work from the comfort of their own homes. I do have uh, Filipino callers and VAs, and they all work from their own home. And I think that it's a big part of our secret sauce. And that is even my employees, even our employees have the same sense of time freedom that you and I do um, at, a, at a teammate level, which, which really helps their morale when executing for my clients or me or both of us, because they are, <laughs> you know. Um, so that's well, great. And that's 
we, we have employees as well um, that do a lot of the follow-up and admin type stuff, but they work from home as well. And, and they work their own schedule. And we really, uh, I think that's why our company works so well with yours is that, you know, we have that similar, um, you know, our company has that similar atmosphere where, you know, I don't, they don't clock in at a certain time. I don't stand over them and make sure that, you know, okay, you need to do this, this, and this. They know what the job is. They know what we're doing. Just go do it. And, and it's the same thing with you guys. You know, you know what, what we want done. Here's the list, call them, give me the leads. I'll work them. Um, I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to manage that, you know, that hard. I, I've been in some other businesses, especially the restaurant industry where you, you really have to be on top of it. And there's a reason why I'm not in that business anymore. I, I don't, I don't want to, I like to have the freedom to, you know, just pass it off, let our employees and let, uh, let lead mining, you know, the, the lead generation team, they just handle it. And, um, I don't want to, I don't want to work that hard anymore. I guess I'm lazy. <laughs> you know, it's funny because, you know, I spent 12 years in that industry as well. And, and, you know, and it gave me the same epiphanies. One thing I learned in the restaurant industry is if my feet weren't there, it didn't run the same. And, and I, I hate it. I absolutely hated it. And so now I've created this virtual presence where my employees always think I'm around and, and it's not in a negative way. It's in a positive way, but you know, it's, it's still, it's still not absence. It's more like I'm, I'm here to support. I'm here as a resource and you know, my employees, I actually work for them, you know, and when, when they need something, normally they're much sharper than I am when it comes to getting things done. Um, you know, and then I have to, you know, I answer to them. Let me, let me know how I can, help you. And, uh, you know, I think that is something that, you know, we learned from being in the restaurant industry, you know, now that you mention it. Well, it's such, it's such a huge difference because the other businesses that I've been in, um, you know, the retail businesses and then the restaurant business where you have to physically be there, you have to manage the employees, you got to stay on top of them all the time. And now it's like, you know, I can not work if I don't want to work or I can, I can go focus on what I need to work on, which is, you know, meeting with sellers, making offers, but I've got that feedback coming from lead generation, um, from the lead generation team. I've got emails coming in with leads. I've got the Facebook ad manager contacting me. Hey, let's make these changes. Let's do this. I need this content created. And then I've got our employees who work from home and do their own thing. And, and they just contact this, you know, Hey, they, you know, what do you want to do about this? What do you want to do about that? Um, it's so much nicer to to have all that feedback coming to me from from you guys, from our employees, um, you know, instead of having to actively be on top of them. That way I can focus on what makes me money, which is meeting sellers and making offers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, if, we're not, if we got to do those revenue generating activities, you know, that's what I call those things. There's a lot of things we can do, you know, but not all those things really generate revenue. <laughs> Um, I didn't mean to get all Dr. Seuss on you there. Um, but Zach, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, man, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out and sitting with me. Um, I'm looking forward to a long relationship and your new markets, your old markets. And, you know, I'm thank, thankful to, you know, call you a friend and a client. Well, I appreciate it, Nick. Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us, dude. Have a good one. Yeah, you too.